Hello everyone. Well, I know it's been a long time since I've done a video. I just haven't really felt like it as this whole pandemic thing just drags on forever and ever. It does really wear you down in the end. And I know I shouldn't complain too much because I am at least working. I have worked through this whole thing. So I know there's people are in far worse situations and that's really sad that it is this way. But staring at these same four walls every day just kind of drags you down. Not socializing like you used to, not being able to see your friends, colleagues, yeah, it does weigh you down and I just sort of thought, why why try and do a video if I'm just getting miserable? Why try and talk about something that uh, someone has poured their heart and soul into making, like distribution, like an application, things like that. They've poured, poured their heart and soul into, thought they've made a really good thing and I'm going to sit here being all miserable about it because I've been staring at the same four walls, so what was the point? I decided to take a break. At least I've done that shelving behind me, that's a nice new thing for this room decorated it, done that cupboard that was in the corner around 90 degrees, so I could get the shelving in. So yeah, improved things here, done a lot of gaming, or Red Dead Redemption and GTA 5, or GTA 5 again I should say, uh, well I bought a PlayStation 4 around, was it Christmas time? And I have to say that's probably about the worst investment I ever made, because uh, it's just been too much of a distraction. Although maybe it was a good thing, I don't know. I could have played some of those games up there, done some videos about it. Well, classic games, but no, I have to play new games instead, don't I? Anyway, I decided to get back to doing a little bit of programming. I know I've been very concerned about privacy. I did a video about this ages ago and been doing the work on NoTrack. I wanted to do an update video on that, uh, why I'm still concerned about privacy. Especially since I had all my information lost again for me. <laughs> Companies are so careless. Anyway. That's something for another video, I think. While I've done a lot of work on NoTrack, it can only block what it knows about, and if it doesn't know about something, it doesn't block it. So there must be a way of blocking more. Must be able to find out stuff. Can it find out stuff? Well, no, not in its current state, it's just a DNS blocker. But this is where my next little project came in. A web page analyzer. Web page analyzer to identify pages relating to tracking or advertising websites. And I know this is very early days, look, I've not even done the README yet, so it's uh, very poorly documented. So it's a Python script and the program to run is analyzer.py and you give it a domain name. For example, opensource.com. What is on opensource.com? Well, it downloads what's on there or what it can see is on there, I should say. So that's a web page, load of JavaScript. And what do we find here? We have a tracker, Adobe Tracker on <laughs> in that script there, dpal.js, and that would have loaded this next domain, which I have blocked. Well, it's blocked by no track. So that was an example of it. I mean, yes, I already know about that one, but uh, I mean, what else have we got? There? But to give it another website, uh, bbc.co.uk slash news, and it's identified tracking pixel. See, I wouldn't have known about that just going onto the website. Another example, let's go for GitHub, not where the project is located, but yeah, I've been using GitHub a bit for other things lately. So yeah, just looking at that, we've got some possible fingerprinting going on there. I know it's a bit weird on my descriptions there, screen fingerprint, but yeah, that essentially that script has something in it which is related to like looking at what size your screen is and where your browser has been so it's things that are probably related to tracking if i was going to look at that script well <laughs> there's no way i'm going to decode all that i oh, just my knowledge of javascript isn't that good there's a few keywords there related to screens i'll show you how this is being done in the script what i'm using is a tool called yara to actually do the analysis of each item that's being downloaded. So Yara is a tool aimed at, but not limited to, helping malware researchers to identify and classify malware samples. I have used Yara at work for trying to classify emails that are submitted to an email reporting system. But I didn't really think of using it initially for doing this web page analysis. And I mean, the concept of the R rules was perfect, really. I'm just looking for various different strings within a script or a HTML page. So we can use a literal text string, or we can use a hexadecimal string. 
or you can use regular expressions. So yeah, you've got various options here. But actually trying to understand the web pages, well, I mean, one way I could have done it was using something like Selenium. But as far as I understand there, that actually controls a browser, for example, like Chrome or Chromium. But I was trying to go for a headless server, so I don't think I could actually put a browser on like a headless server because a browser would need a desktop, a way of actually displaying content. And if, if all you have is a command line in Linux, then how would this work? So I decided not to use Selenium. For understanding JavaScript, well, it's JS2PY, but I tried that and honestly, it was atrocious on the performance and it didn't really do anything with those massive JavaScripts. You know, for example, like this, I mean, it, I could give this to JS2PY, but it wouldn't really be able to do anything with it. It couldn't execute it in the same way that the browser would end up executing it. And yeah, as I said, performance was atrocious. We've got things like Beautiful Soup for actually pulling data out of a web page, but that was too much for what I needed. So what I ended up using was HTML parser that is included within Python, or is one of the libraries included within Python. So that pulls out the elements I'm looking for on a page. But what I'm really interested in is like JavaScript, images. Uh, we'll probably look at the link tags in the future because I know there can be some tracking things on there. If I have a look at some of the code, and this one does the downloading of the web pages. So I'm actually using requests to actually get the data downloaded. I suppose there's the option of looking what cookies come down with this, but that's probably something for the future. But at the moment, we're just downloading the data. I then put it in an object called file info, and this just holds onto the data that I'm looking for. So, so that's, well, the URL object, file extension, file name, the SHA-256 hash, the binary data that's been downloaded, text data that's been downloaded, and just a few other things there and that are useful to working in this object. So yeah, that's how I'm understanding which, uh, that's how I'm understanding what tracking pixel is. So I've established uh, two of the SHA-256 hashes that are literally the smallest possible GIF image that you can get. And they're usually related to tracking pixels just because they're sending a small amount of data to your computer and logging it on the server so like looking back at the BBC, so all that parameter data would be saved on the server. So yeah, that, that would like identify my session on BBC's website. And then there's some of the processing of the data. I'm doing Yara file type matching. And I'll show you some of those rules in a moment. And then analysis of the files with Yara. Well, that's just looking at various different rules. So as far as some of the rules go, so for example, this is the file type matching. This is using the magic numbers at the beginning of well, most of the file types. So for example, a GIF image always starts with GIF 8, actually it's GIF 87 or 89. So that would be hexadecimal for those numbers. And the function I'm using in Yara is uint32. That is literally looking at the memory address at memory address zero beginning of the file and it's big endian based so the number is reversed so that's 47 49 46 and 38 so yeah, it's that number reversed and that would identify that file that is downloaded as a gif image or gif image i should have said and for analyzing trackers well this is the only actual specific tracker i've written so far these are for the Adobe trackers and I've given a couple of examples and I've given a couple of examples here. The meta section can include whatever you want. And one of the items I've decided to add is this weight because you can actually get multiple matches with Yara rules, but you actually want to know what is the most realistic match, which match should be the one that identifies what we have here. I'm kind of thinking for the future. I know I've like got I know I've only got a few files at the moment, but yeah, I'm really thinking of what this project could look like in the future. So that's why I've decided to use this waiting. And with this Adobe matching, I'm looking for well, a header string within 30 to 50 
uh, 30 to 50 bytes of the file start. And then all of string, well, string asterisk, so string one, string two, string three, these are, those are unique strings I can find within the file. And then a couple of URLs that are gonna be extracted. So that's how I've done some of the URL extraction at the moment is with Yara. Although that's for the JavaScript. With HTML web pages, that's being done with the Python HTML parser. So I'm sure there's a lot of information there that's probably going over everyone's head, but yeah, I, just, I just wanted to describe how the project is working. Feel free to download it and take a look at it. And if you want to contribute anything towards it, yeah, more than welcome. This is one of the more generic rules. So that's name, screen, tag, fingerprint. And I'll just reference a script that was doing some very basic form of tracking. So it just had these key strings that are in there. So it's not a very specific match. Done a low weighting, so anything that's more specific can override this, and that would be the match. So I'm sure this can be implemented into no track, either for a one-off check-in that the user wants to do, or perhaps with the analytics side. Could it actually run through any unusual domains that have been identified? By no track. I mean, maybe perhaps a quiet time of the day, look through all the domains that have been accessed on that network and start looking at them to see if anything is unusual, if it's like tracking or advertising. It's just an idea at the moment. This would all be done on the local system, so no data is actually being sent anywhere. And as always, you are in control of your own data. And I nearly forgot to mention that I also built another script for actually identifying key strings within these like JavaScript files called word occurrences. So you can actually look at multiple files in one go and find consistent words. Or you could add words that you want to ignore within another file. So just thought that might be something useful. Although I'm sure it could be done with the Linux terminal. I just decided to take it a little step further and write a Python script for it. And I've actually gone and documented this project fairly well. <laughs> so I definitely need to get the uh, documentation done on the web page analysis. But that's what's keeping me amused at the moment. As I said, this is really early days in the project, so it's not really doing a whole lot at the moment. It needs many more Yara rules being written so it can actually start identifying pages of interest. But yeah. I'm sure it will happen. Well, thanks for watching, and I'll see you all later.